Welcome back to Greatest as Let's Play Agrarian Skies, Episode 9. Nearly 10 episodes in, and where have we got to? Well, between the episodes, I've done more of what we've already been doing. So, just to briefly recap, we've got a set of cyclic assemblers that are making... Uh, where's the schematic? Uh, yeah, taking broken iron ore, turning that into iron gravel. Then another set that are, um, well, sorry, go down here. We've got the this thing turning gravel into the next set of items. Crushed, set of broken. And again, that, that transforms it into um, sand. The sand again goes into this and back out and goes into this third set, which then makes the dust. So, iron ore dust. Uh, this contraption, I've added on to the episodes. All that's happening here is um, my gravel is going in here, and my sand is going in here. And these are acting as buffers, uh, because when I've been doing a lot of stuff upstairs, I've been building up a, a large backlog of particular types. Um, so in order to cope with all of that and process it all you kind of need these buffers they don't work too well without them um and then below them these are set so that either of these two chests can feed into either of these two autonomous activators uh, and around the back if i don't get myself trapped that's annoying no nah. Really? There we go. And around the back, what I've done is build a, a kind of mini machine to make hammers. In this case, stone hammers. Now, there's a problem with it, and I'll tell you it now. If you solve it yourselves, feel free to. I'm not going to solve it right now. It's not too important. But if uh, if we look here, it's probably going to be a bit dark. Uh, don't have any lights, sorry. But on the left here is a chest, and in here I put sticks. On the right is Igneous Extruder, which is going to eject cobblestone. Here's a cycle assembler, and that takes sticks. And if I t in fact, if I turn on the uh, output of this, it should light up the area. There we go. So this is going to output cobblestone. Cobblestone is going to go in here and get made by this schematic into hammers. So you just do the schematic just as before. The downside to this is if I leave this on, it's going to fill this with cobblestone. And it really will continue to just fill it. Which means if it runs out of sticks, it's going to fill all the slots available for sticks. And then it's not going to be able to craft anything. So, I just turn it on every so often, let it craft enough hammers, it's stuffed, uh, which means it just can't eject any more hammers at the moment, into this buffer chest, which has lots of hammers, and this goes into the back of the activators, which are processing our ore. So, as long as I feed this thing with sticks, and I can turn it on every so often, it, every hour as we're talking here, then... You know we don't need to worry about the hammers and i'll switch from stone uh, from iron hammers to stone hammers because stone hammers are effectively free as long as we get enough sticks so on to the last part um we now if you look upstairs the final lap but of all this system which probably can be made more efficient but the final output you'll see all this is this is the backlog i was talking about 39 stacks of pulverized iron ore that is going to need to be processed um in here is our overflow chest and we're getting lead ore dust and this is the final stuff that you want to actually first pulverize to double it and then um put into a redstone furnace just like that we do here but on a larger scale so what i've done is create four each of redstone furnace and four of pulverizer and i want to do the rest on camera just so we can you know complete the whole system everyone's happy free iron 
gold and tin and copper and all, all the usual kind of suspects. Um, so how do we want to set this out? We definitely want probably pairs of devices, so let's see if this does it. So first we want things to come out of this line and hit our pulverizers. So let's go ahead and put those down. Each pulverizer we want to eject. Make sure it's ejecting to the right. Yeah, that'll do. And that's orange, not the red orange, because we're going to get byproducts too. Uh, input, well, let's have it at the top. And we want the same thing for each new pulverizer. Input at the top, orange to the right. <clears throat> I'm not sure if this is enough pulverizers and redstone furnaces. We'll soon see once we start processing. I think it'll be enough. The only time we're going to get problems is when we start processing all that backlog up there. It's just going to jam up the system and keep looping. So what I may need to do here is is feed up and into some chests which are above here. But um, yeah, I'm not going to worry about it initially. I'll, I'll do that temporarily if I need to later. And on the right hand side here, we want our furnaces. And we want to accept from the left and output to the right. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, definitely right. Because we're accepting from the top on this one and I just like to keep things nice and clean. Sorry, it is a little dark. Um... I wonder if I've got some torches. I don't really need torches because of the, uh, the magnum thing, but it would just be useful so that you can see everything. Got any wood on me? I do. There we go. And then what we're going to do is, from the output, we're going to make sure we send everything upstairs. So, one, two, three, four. Change these to outputs. We're not going to be too fussy here because this is straightforward. Okay, and now we want to make sure on the input side that we're only filtering uh, in certain things. So we're going to have to get some of that um, dust from upstairs, just like any other system like this. We just want one of each, so we need to make sure I've got enough inventory space. Um, For now, just let's just drop this in here. Should be enough. I just put this chest in place to pull out of the redstone furnace automatically. I can undo other stuff. Um, yes, here it is. So we've got eight here: lead, silver, gold. We've got platinum, nickel. Minium, we got iron, copper. We're missing tin. Okay, so yeah, we'll just have to watch out for tin. So we just want one, one of each. Mm. 
I could probably make a tin dust actually. But yeah, let's just let's just make a tin dust. Just so we can do this and never have to worry about it ever again. There we go. So just like we've done previously, set everything to whitelist. And we also want to set this as first destination, so green. And then we just want to make sure we put uh, stuff in here, so iron, copper, aluminium, lead, nickel, gold, platinum, silver. And since we've set these to whitelist now, we should just be able to connect this up. Now, then we want to connect this side. Um, this way. So each of these will accept anything, so we just go through these and tin, lead, copper, aluminium. I just put them in the right in the places I think of them. They should, they should be going just so that I can see at a glance um, what's missing. That's copper. There we go. Something here. And last time. Now, that should be working, I believe. We'll know soon enough, uh, so it's going in here and out. And then, optionally, this stuff should go that way. What we could do is connect this up. So that things can bypass that way, and then just disconnect this side. So when they come out, they're guaranteed to, hit, to be travelling along here, trying to search for a route. If they are, they're going to drop into these um, cyclic assemblers. If not, they're going to go this way. And if they're one of the acceptable materials, they go this way. They go in and out. Otherwise, they're going to follow this chain all the way up and upstairs. So everything should be set now. Uh, I think that's it. What we're going to have to do is probably dump some of some of this dust into our input chest. Oh, it's raining. Okay. Into our input chest, and let's see if we get... What we should see is we should start to see ingots in here. And I'm already seeing ingots, so that's a good thing. Yep. See, we get more tin. So it, it's all working, and now what we can do is send all this stuff down into the input chest and then I think pretty much we're done with the input chest um, as you can see I've put the other stuff that was in my overflow into barrels and what we can probably do with the rest is just move the barrels into a single wall wherever we want or into a single container that can handle more of it like an AE system which we're gonna to have to get to soon 
building up Sutter's course nicely. Okay, what's next? Okay, so the next kind of thing we need is a tree farm, and for a tree farm we're going to need, well, lots of earth to plant the trees on. So we get some oak leaves, and if you haven't tried using shears yet, if you compare this to using um, the crook, um, it's very, very fast. Of course you don't get the saplings, so make sure you've got some saplings before you decimate your entire tree population. But these, much like saplings, can be used to make earth. I should probably make more of these barrels just to get more earth. Uh, it's pretty fast anyway. Let's see if I've got any spare. Okay, I don't. So I'm going to have to make more. But before we get to that point, we're going to need rubber. Now, rubber is something you get from rubber trees. I think I mentioned it in the previous episode that obviously you can get rubber seeds from uh, to get saplings from sieving dirt. In this case, we've got the rubber, so we just need to make uh, the plastic stuff. And that's just smelting up the rubber. So we're going to need eight of the raw plastic for each of planter and a harvester to get our initial tree farm. So 16. Let's just uh, drop that in place. While we're going to do the rest. Yeah, there we go, you see? Quite quick. Much, much faster than using the crook. There are obviously multiple tiers of crook, and I think they get you more saplings and stuff like that, like golden one and other things. Maybe we'll try that later for other saplings, but, but for now we want to get started with a tree farm. Um, okay, so let's see what else we need. We need a a planter which is the bottom layer of everything so we get two of these plastic sheets and these are four plastic that's why we need eight plastic per one we need a flower pot which is three bricks that's fine and the rest we've seen before so let's go and get those bricks cooking as well that's potatoes not clay where's my clay I have lots of the stuff somewhere there we go I need three of it. Let's go and see how everything's going. Cut those up. There we've got our plastic. We make those, we can get Lots of rubber sheets. In fact, uh, you got four rubber sheets for each lot, so you needed a lot less than I made. Um, ah, yeah, you see? Four rubber sheets. So you should only need uh, eight raw plastic. I made twice as much. Uh, that's okay. We need another thing to dispose of some of the byproducts as well, so don't worry about making extra. There's our flower pots. What else do we need? Machine frame like normal, two pistons, some copper and gold. Fine, I need to get rid of some of this inventory. Uh, you can go and you and you. Don't need the clay or the wool. carry around far, far, far too much. Um, yeah, let's keep the rest of you. Don't need the juicer anymore because we're making bread. I haven't actually mentioned that, but um, behind the house, instead of um, the previous potato field, we've now got a wheat field. And what happens with wheat? Well, if we just switch this around, Replant those. Uh, what we do with the wheat is just like you would in vanilla, you make it into bread. Now, if you're used to other mod packs, you may be used to make it to flour first to double, but of course, this is JD's pack, so you're not going to double. 
and you can take your bread and you just dump your bread into any, you know, furnace or anything that'll cook, and it'll turn into toast, which instead of one, will uh, be two worth of hunger, instead of um, our previous uh, melon, melon juice or carrot juice, all of that kind of stuff is uh, all one. There we go. So that's that done. Um, yeah, so we wanted a machine frame, so that's a gold. Poor iron. Obviously, you see now these ingots are much, much easier to grab stuff from. Uh, and we need some glass, which I'm probably short of. Glass is a problem. I'm going to have to probably build downstairs in the basement um, a way of getting basic uh, building materials. So that's cobble, that's gravel, that's sand, that's uh, glass. The, the stuff that would normally be processed by the system downstairs. I don't want to process that particular set because all this stuff downstairs is keeping up very well. Um, so we actually want some of that stuff anyway. So let's just grab a little bit of cobblestone, make a little bit of sand. <clears throat> oh, while I'm doing this, feel free to think about what you might want to see next. Um, I've obviously got plans, but more than happy to, uh, if, particularly if you haven't understood anything, or if you're a bit confused, or if you've got a problem to solve, if you try this yourself, uh, feel free to leave comments, and I'm more than happy to reply to them, or um, show something in a future episode to uh, take care of specific problems. Uh, this is one of my problems that I'm going to solve as well, just... The real problem about the lack of IC2, of course, um, if you're used to IC2, is that um, we can't really speed up these machines. Um, even if I put more power into the bottom, let's see what the maximum... Yeah, it's using the set the maximum, so you can't speed them up, it's, it's annoying. You can increase them in parallel, so you can process more at once, but actually speeding them up is a... <laughs> well, it's just not going to happen. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. That's a bit annoying. Anyway. So, we want a machine frame, which we've got now. Uh, two pistons, two copper. Okay, so we want another gold. We want two redstone. Uh, we want some copper. Uh, a couple more iron more redstone and we need some wood So, pistons. Two of. One of these. And a planter. Okay. Now, you do have to power these. But the idea is that we're going to self power this. I may need to bootstrap it off one of those cubes. But well, the idea is we're going to self-power this, and I'm going to need to expand this um, this area. Yeah, I don't really have enough room for my typical size tree farm. I could probably get it, fit it in somewhere, but I need to build a large platform. Let me go and build a large platform, and I'll be right back. There we go. We've got a larger platform. And if I just... Kind of get us to a reasonable size. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then put it there. Okay, and there's seven on this side as well, and in both ways. So uh, I've not sunk this into the floor because we do want it to be level with the rest of the farms, and eventually we'll just expand this area so that this is the ground level. Um, where's my earth? Here we go. So. We 
catch it once it one level above. And kind of the smallest, smallest, um, this is MFR by the way, Mine Factory Reloaded. The smallest uh, farm is kind of like this size. And if we were to power this right now and put some saplings in, it would just plant them on top. So that's fine. But what we kind of should be doing is expanding this out. Whoops. A fair bit more. And that's where the, the leaves are going to come in. Um, I'm going to go and get many, many more uh, pieces of earth to drop in place like this. And I'll be right back when I've done that. And just because I kind of feel like uh, needing to, uh, I've just set this simpler system up just for composting things. So if I just drop leaves into the top, this should start filling the barrels. Hopefully. Yeah, there we go. You see? Filling up. And I'm just going to go and craft uh, the extraction to another chest. Let's just grab it in here. There we go. Another chest. And uh, this will be much expanded later, of course, when we when we get this done properly. But um, let's just put a spacer and then the chest. And you should be able to pull out from these barrels on the side. Um, like that but uh, I should probably going to need the autonomous active uh, uh, pneumatic servos to do that And you probably want to put more of these barrels in a larger system once we get going properly, but uh, now one, two, three, four. Hopefully they'll let me, mm, they're not pulling from this side, which is odd. Oh, they're not connecting. Pull them out manually. I wonder if oak barrels can't be accessed that way. Would they have to be from the bottom maybe? That's a possibility. Um, okay, for now, don't worry about it. But uh, I'll come back to that and figure it out. It may have to be stone barrels or something along those lines. Um, just want to get something automatic in a little bit, a little while. So for now, back to gathering more leaves. And I did actually set them up as it's being extracted from the bottom. That does appear to work fine. Uh, so let's just let's just set this up so that we can um, just set things going and not have to worry about it ever again. And yes, it really doesn't matter if it's uh, stone or oak. So we're just going to wait for that. There we go, see? So let's just get rid of the barrels from over here and move them. We also have to take the uh, the covers with us for the top. Oh, well, they've got item ducks on them, so they shouldn't fill up. Yeah, that's, uh, that's fine. Let's just throw everything in here and...
Yeah, we'll replace that at some point. Stone barrels are nicer anyway, so I may well just go with those in the future, but that's pretty much automatic processing now, I think, which is nice. Could do with it filling a little faster. Hey, that's, that's the way it goes. Okay, so I've filled in half the farm, and this is far from the maximum size tree farm you can build. But uh, I just wanted to get it started, um, and I may expand it a bit later, but um, should have supplied plenty of wood. I left, however, this side off, just so we could expose the kind of workings of the farm. There's our planter in the middle, and to it we're going to get uh, power, and we need to get items to it. What items? Well, we definitely need to supply it with saplings. So let's go to make the other piece, the other half, the, the harvester. We need an Invarax, two sets of shears, redstone reception coil, machine frame. You've seen all of those before. Uh, is that everything? No, I'm obviously missing something. Looks like I've got everything. Okay, he just didn't like uh, giving that to me. Fine, so let's just get a couple of spaces and sleep through the night. And... As usual, I can never remember which way around you plant the uh, the harvester. So it definitely needs to be above this this floor level. So I just uh, do this. Let's see which way. Nope, that's the wrong way. Of course it is. So I can rotate it. Probably can rotate it actually. Um, yeah, there we go. So the the grinding side facing your farm, basically. So rid of this. So we need to spy this with some power too. And to do that, what I want to do is to put one of these cubes. I've just been charging up. in the way, and I'm going to get it to output to the top and to the bottom. Right away though, I'm going to put everything on input, I don't want it to power anything uh, accidentally. Set it to shear leaves, no. The reason is that unlike if you use shears normally or anything else, uh, when you set shear, shear leaves in here, it's not going to give you any saplings, and you need saplings to keep the farm going. So, leave it off for the moment. Later on, may well introduce it, but for now, leave it off. Okay, so we then need to get some items out of here. Uh, we need to send saplings down that way. Actually, better set this up to only do saplings. Simpler that way. White list of oak saplings. Later, if I can get a tree elizer, I'll change this a little bit to, to be a different type of sapling, but for now. Uh, so we're going to output. I don't want it there. Probably not. Set up at the back. You may be wondering why. Don't worry, we'll come to that shortly. In fact, I don't actually think you need... 
yeah, on uh, MFR stuff, I don't think you need the um, servos. I think you're fine, just leave it to app mode and it will eject, unlike all the other stuff where we have to pull out. So, there's our basic setup. What we also need now is some way of recharging this Leadstone Energy Cell. So, uh, I need a few things. I need a source of power. Yeah, we could run a cable all the way from the other side, but tree farms can be self-powered and they have enough power to power a couple of other things too, depending on how efficient Jade has decided um, this should be. So, let's get an aqueous accumulator. Steam Dynamo, where are you? There you are. And I probably need more item ducts. Yeah, I will need more item ducts and some bar well, some barrels. You will get a lot of stuff from this. Yeah, that should be enough. Uh, I need the item ducts though. Okay. Yeah, it's tin and lead. I'm having a problem with the tin at the moment. I'm going to have to investigate, find out why. There should be a lot more of it than there is. Um, if you look at everything else, you know, over 10 stacks, 20 stacks, even six stacks of platinum, uh, shiny ingot, sorry. Uh, yeah, but same thing. Um, but not a lot of tin. Anyway, that's for later. Now, let's just get some of those. I do have a bucket, good. So what we want to do, let's set this up backwards. We want a steam dynamo going in here. I think we do this side. Yeah, let's do it this side. That will charge the Leadstone Energy Cell. It's still full at the moment. But into that, in order for that to work, we need to supply charcoal, and we need to supply um, water. Charcoal we can get from the wood. Um, not quite sure how I'm going to construct that just yet, but let's deal with the accurate bit first. And that will slowly get the water from the environment, but we need more than that, so let's just, uh, there we go, yeah, we need quite a lot more than that. Let's grab the bucket and just, there you go. Yeah, we're going to need full blocks. Thought that'd be the case, but that was a bit of a shortcut.
This one. That's two. So there we go. Water's filling up nicely. We now need the other side of things. We need the charcoal. And for that, we're going to need a redstone furnace. Um, which I'm going to have to build. So annoying. Actually, I think I'm just going to rob this one. Because we're running out of time in the episode. Okay, so what we want is, <clears throat> excuse me, we can power it from here because it's right next to that, so that's fine. We want to input from the bottom, and the bottom we want to tell it to make, there we go, only accept Oak wood. All right, that's the first step. On this side, however, we want an item duct, and this one must only accept charcoal. Now I don't have any charcoal, so let's. Uh, ah, yes. Let's uh, put some power to the left. To try and seize this before. In fact, it's not going to happen anywhere, so that's fine. Charcoal. Okay. So it's at the charcoal. Whitelist only charcoal must go here. So if I just dump that in there now, that should go across and should start powering this up, which, as this middle thing is set as the Energy cell, it's draining a little bit now. Set to input from the right, we will start charging it as soon as it gets enough wood. I need to this. I need to have an output for this though, of course. So, um, let's output the side. I think. And this is again thermal expansion, so we. Definitely need to have a servo. There we go. So this only accepts wood, that only accepts charcoal, that only accepts saplings. So pretty much all of this should now work when I set it to output left. That's gone. Should arrive in here. Please arrive in here. <laughs> Come on. Ah, there we go. See, it does work. Steam generated. That should then start charging the red sun energy cell, which it is. So now we can say, output power to the top and to the bottom, please. And over here, we need to load this with saplings. Uh, if I just dump what I have in there, you'll see what happens. Now, One important point here is that, by default, each of these has a range of 3x3. Three three. This one centered on itself, this one in front of it, like this. We need to give them upgrades. And in this case, this is a 7x7 seven seven farm, so I think... Uh, in fact, I may expand it later. The iron upgrade, let's see what the iron upgrade is. Um, these are them. Gold increases the radius by seven. 
bronze, silver, tin. Let's see what silver needs. Gold. Okay, so we're going to need six raw plastic for this, and I think I've only got two. Back in a second. There we go, six raw plastic. So I'm going to do the silver upgrade, so I want uh, six silver. Because you need one upgrade for each, the harvester and the planter. So six. Uh, I need gold. I'm going to convert that into nuggets. I need four redstone. And I think that's it. Silver. They don't stack, unfortunately, but that's okay. And uh, let's just grab some more saplings. If I've got some. The tree farm should start uh, planting itself after a while, but. Till then. So load the center with the upgrade and the saplings. And it should start planting very shortly. Load this with the upgrade. See, just planting from one side. And that should be fine. You are still powering upwards, that's fine. Now we just need to collect our stuff somewhere. So in this case, this is what our barrels are for. Um, let's just put them... For the moment. Let's put them along here. One, two, three, four, five. And disconnect you. Uh, one thing as well, we should make sure that that's the first destination. Because these could theoretically accept the saplings. Um, any other destinations we want to make sure is first? Probably you. Because you're accepting the wood. And this should be needed, but oh no, it may do, because yeah, those can take charcoal too. So yeah, set everything on here to first destination and we should be fine. I think that's pretty much it, as long as I've got the range right, that is. And yeah, we have. You see, the tree's gone. It's probably been output here and should probably be building up. There we go. See? Tree farm. Self-powered, all running. Great. The only thing you need to take care of is this sludge buildup. And um, easiest way to do that for now, just to finish off the episode. I know it's running a little bit long, guys. Very sorry, but we just need to get this finished. Uh, just pick up a stack of iron. Uh, make a cauldron. Two pressure plates. To make a drum. I know I said there's a lot of iron before, but we got plenty now. A drum and that's it. We got the we got fluid ducts. We do have fluid ducts. There we go. So if we go up. You can see it really does um, process things quite yeah, There we go. See, all this is starting to get planted. The saplings are starting to multiply, and, and you know, we got all that kind of good stuff. So, just to hit fluid duct on the top. Lava, well, drum on the top of that. Turns it into a sludge drum and fills it automatically. Don't need to worry about anything, but if you really do want to be. Yeah, proper, you could just do that. It doesn't really matter because this ejects anyway. It's not in there. Sludge is toxic, uh, but we can boil it in a sludge boiler. 
Let's just see if this actually will... I will pop off, so we need to actually pick that up with a pickaxe. Okay, for now, that's... Wow, it's even planting on this. Okay. So that's get apples. And you should see this line fill up with wood. You'll see it fill up with saplings once. This is full, entirely full of saplings. That means, you know, obviously 16 stacks before you'll see saplings out here. When you do start to see saplings out here, all you can put, all you can do, or you know, all you need to do, is pull out of it, send it over until here, and now you've got an earth generator, which will let us finish off the rest of the farm. That's it for this episode. Um, we're now automatic farming of wood, and we can get rid of all of those over there. Um, we can replace that with something else. I'm not sure, maybe animal farms. We've got plenty of them around. Um, we've got automatic ingot processing and we're pretty much in good shape for anything else we shouldn't be short of food either because at worst case we'll get a fair amount of apples from this anyway but um, and we got bread so everything is great uh, please don't, don't forget to subscribe or leave a comment again if you've got any questions if you've got any suggestions for upcoming episodes please do let me know and I'm more than happy to uh, see what I can do Hopefully. Bears. Bears. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Next time will be episode 10. And um, we'll see what we can do for that one. Maybe some animal farming. Yeah, because we've got, now got lots of different animals spawning all over the place. There's a pig down there. Uh, little bits and pieces. So maybe we should sell that too. For now, this is me, Grey Duster, signing off. Thanks for watching.